Hey, Clayton Bates here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your payment gateways on your Shopify store. Now, I'm going to go through quite a lot of different payment gateways and stuff like that. Um, there is some coding if you ever want to add like Afterpay and ZipPay and stuff. If you want me to do a separate video on that, let me know in the comments. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how to actually add the payment gateways into your. So at the checkout, you have those payment gateways. I'll also do some timestamps. So if you want to jump ahead, um, just check out the description and you'll be able to go straight to those times. Um, I really value your time. So let's get into it. I'll try to be as quickly as do this as quick as I can. So basically, when you're in the back end of Shopify, you just want to click here in the bottom left settings. And then you just want to click payments here. Now, basically, this is going to take you into the screen where you can actually add all your payment gateways and stuff like that. Now, sometimes when you go to add a payment gateway, if you haven't set up everything in the back end, like your address, your phone number, stuff like that, um, you won't actually be able to add all this information. Now, to actually find that information, you just click here, settings, and then general, and this is where you go add all your information, um, your legal business name, your phone number, stuff like that. So if we go back here to payments, Normally, if your country accepts Shopify payments, that Shopify like FPOS sort of payment gateway, um, it will be right here. Now, in some countries, you won't actually have Shopify payments. Um, so to find out what payment gateways you can actually use in your country, you just go to this website, shopify.com backslash payment dash gateways. And you can just scroll down here go to the continent and then select your country. So I'm in Australia, so I could select Australia. And then it's just gonna display every single payment gateway I can actually use. Now for this video, I'm just gonna do Shopify payments. Um, people that can't use Shopify payments normally use um, to checkout. Um, so you could try that one as well. Now, basically for this one, you just wanna click here, complete account setup. And then you just want to fill out all this information. So there's a couple of like legal things that might be different depending on what country you're in. Um, for example, ABN is like for Australian, that's like our business number and like sole trader, um, your legal business name. So for example, mine's Inspire Small Business. So you could just put that in there and you basically just fill all this out, the address, um, your first name, last name, date of birth. Um, anyone guess my date of birth? Maybe I should just leave that, guess it in the comments what you actually think. Um, what type of business and stuff like that down here. Now, the really important one is this one right here. This is what's going to display on someone's um, bank, bank um, transactions and stuff like that. So you probably want to put your business name. So you could put like buy a small business but uh, it's too longer too long so you could just do like inspire small bus that will do and then just down here you just want to add your like bank details and stuff like that you can read the terms and terms of service here and then you click um, complete account setup now basically that's going to set up all your fpos in the back end of the checkout um, once you do that now normally shopify payments has like a it might ask you for like more information about you and stuff like that. Over here at home, it will probably say something here when you actually set it up and you can just click the link and um, give Shopify all the information they need. Now, sometimes when people's first payments go through on Shopify payments, they actually hold the money. Um, but, you know, the more transactions you do, you can ring them up, things like that, um, the quicker you actually get your money. So the Normally, the first couple of transactions might be slow, but after that, will be better. Now, this one for PayPal, you just have to click Activate PayPal Account here. And then basically, what you're going to do here is basically just sign into your PayPal. So you're just going to add your email address here, what country you're in, and press Next. And then basically, what this is going to do, it's going to try to connect your PayPal to your Shopify. So when people actually check out, um, the PayPal button will be linked to your PayPal account. 
Now I'm gonna, not going to go through this, but it's pretty a quick, quick and easy sort of process that you can actually go through, um, and then it'll just connect everything up. Now down here, we've got a few other things that I'm guessing most people will might want to know about. Um, but basically, we have third-party providers and alternative payment methods. So if you actually click here, it's going to give you a list of other payment options people can do. So there's the two checkout I was talking about before. Um, but most of these ones are for FBOS from memory. Yeah. So for example, um, where is it? Eway. I used Eway once. A long time, oh yeah, eWay e Rapid. So that's actually one for just Australia and a couple of un other countries. Um, but it's totally up to you. Um, that's for FPOS. My personal, like what I actually think if you have Shopify payments, it's just so much easier just to use Shopify payments. Um, but it's totally up to you. If you're doing a large volume of revenue, like the payment provider you use can make a big difference. Because from memory, I think eWay is actually cheaper than Shopify payments. Um, the only problem is I did have one problem when um, I had a fraudulent transaction go through eWay, and I actually think if that if that fraudulent transaction went through Shopify payments, it would have probably got handled a lot better than it actually did. So it's really up to you. Um, this one here, alternative payments, this is like more like Afterpay, ZipPay, all that sort of stuff. Um, but basically, we have see how we have Afterpay here. And I think zip pay, yeah, that's down there. Um, but put it on lay by. So there's quite a lot of other ones that you want to use here. Most people probably just use like one FPOS and then a PayPal account. Most of the clients' websites I actually see, they normally do about 45 to 50% PayPal, 45 to 50% FPOS. Um, so it's really up to you. I, I recommend that you at least have like PayPal and an FPOS provider. Um, but some websites might need these types of like Afterpay, ZipPay, stuff like that. Basically, all you want to do here is if you want to use that is just click into it. And it'll tell you all the stuff you need to actually add. Now, for Afterpay, normally you have to apply for an account. They have to see your website. And then they normally give you like a merchant ID security key that you just paste in here. And then click activate Afterpay or activate X payment gateway. Um, that's what most of them all do. <clears throat> For example, zip pay, zip pay down here, zip pay public key, zip pay private. So they've all got the way they actually explain it. They send you the keys and the, the codes and stuff. And you just go into the one that you want to activate and put them here and then activate it. Um, easy done. The only problem with those sort of gateways is that um, you normally want to add some code onto your website. And like I was saying at the beginning, um, I can do videos like that. Just let me know what payment gateway you want to use um, and I can actually do that video for you. Now, the last one down here is manual payment methods. So basically, if we click here on manual payment method, We've got create custom payment method, bank deposit, money order, cash on delivery. Now, I'd say most people watching this wouldn't wouldn't need cash on delivery, COD. Um, these ones here, like bank deposit, money order, I personally don't think most people watching this would need that. I used to have them on my old website years and years ago, and I think the first thousand orders I got, maybe three of them were like bank deposit or money order and they're just a nightmare. Um, so it's nearly not worth having it. I'm guessing some people might need it, um, but personally, if you don't absolutely need it, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't use them. <clears throat> and this one down here, um, payment capture, automatically or manually. Um, most Again, most people watching this would need automatically. I think probably the only people that would need manually is if they had like wholesale accounts where um, people place the order and then they get the payment later. Um, so yeah, I think pretty much everyone watching this would be automatically. Um, and then maybe if you had like a wholesale website, um, you might need to use manually. So I think that's about it. Um, hopefully you like this. 
Um, let me know if you like this video, if it was helpful and stuff like that. Um, I'm really trying to be dedicated to making a lot more videos like this. So your feedback really helps me out. So until next time, have a good one. Bye.